Welcome to another episode of the Bandage Podcast, a weekly wrap-up of the most trending healthcare news. Each week, join me and my co-host Alex Ross as we'll discuss the latest in healthcare, health IT, and compliance. In this week's episode, we discuss a food recall, light pollution studies, and effects of video games on mental health. Let's wrap things up. This is episode 61 for the week of November 30th. I'm Alex Ross, and today I will be flying solo because Matt is away for Thanksgiving. I wish that I had as much family and friends as he does, but that's all right. I'll just have to fill in and be enough energy for both of us today. Before I get started, this week our diagnosis code is W52.XXXA. Crushed, pushed, or stepped on by crowd or human stampede initial encounter. I think you all understand where I'm going with this one. I actually picked this one. Um, I didn't have to do much research because this is the diagnosis code that showed up on the bill that I got after this weekend. As you can imagine, Black Friday shopping is always one of my favorite things to do. Usually, I'm not even looking to buy anything. I'm only there because... I want to people watch, and I think you can appreciate that as well. People watching on Black Friday is a whole lot of fun because you get to see the people like me who are just hanging out, and you recognize them, give them a little head nod as you walk past. Then you see the people who are just so serious about it all. They're zoned in. They know exactly what they need. They're going crazy over the last toaster that's on the shelf. I mean, it's insane and a whole lot of fun if you can handle it. Uh, But this year. I, I, if you're going to people watch, if you're not actually going to shop, my advice is that you don't stand at the front of the line, Uh, because as soon as those doors open, if you're not just as crazy running at full speed towards the toasters, then they're going to run full speed right over top of you, and that's exactly what happened to me this week. It wasn't fun, it wasn't pretty, lesson learned, wait your turn in line, And uh, yeah, if you're going to people watch, do it a little more safely. With that, let's get into the news. First up, hopefully these weren't part of your Thanksgiving spread. Chicken and beef samosa products containing spring roll pastries have been recalled by the manufacturer due to misbranding and an undeclared allergen. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Food Safety and Inspection Service is issuing a public health alert for these products to make consumers aware that they shouldn't eat them. The problem was discovered during routine FSIS verification activities. There are currently no confirmed reports of adverse reactions due to consuming these products. Anyone concerned about an illness should contact their healthcare provider. Obviously, Not something you want to happen uh, with your products getting mislabeled, especially when allergens are involved. As you prepare your Thanksgiving meal, uh, you probably aren't preparing spring rolls uh, made with chicken and beef. You're probably making some kind of of turkey or ham or, I don't know, maybe you do make chicken or beef, but probably not spring rolls. That is what you save for Christmas dinner. (laughs) For any company that's running a food-based product, allergy labeling is arguably one of the most important things you can do because your foods contain things that could make people very sick. And, you know, with other things that make people sick, you try to avoid them entirely, but you're purposely putting things in there that could make people sick potentially. So you have to let them know. And in this case, it seems like they did not. It reminds me of when I was back In the good old glory days of college, I still have a picture of it somewhere. I went to breakfast, and as I'm going through the lines, serving up my plate, they had a large container of scrambled eggs, which were labeled scrambled eggs, and then directly under that, a sign that says, contains eggs. And I took a picture of it just to send to my family and say, well, I sure hope it does. If you're a person with food allergies... I know that you're definitely always careful about what you do, so you should probably know about that mistake. Next up, getting out of the classroom to study effects of pollution. High school students from Wisconsin are concerned about how light pollution affects health and safety. Light pollution is excessive, obtrusive, or misdirected light. 
The students joined a nonprofit education group to design and build an electronic light pollution sensor. The International Dark Sky Association says that growing evidence links the brightening of the night sky to increased energy consumption, disruption of the ecosystem and wildlife, and harm to human health. The student-led project was started to educate the public about light pollution. The open-ended study period will continue until developers are sure that the information from the sensor is reliable. I would be interested to see what this sensor says about where I live now. I know that when I first moved into my current house, the curtains that I put up in the bedroom were white. They were pretty thick curtains. They were pretty heavy curtains. Uh, and they worked just fine for the first couple days until the neighbor across the street, kind of diagonally from me, decided to install a new porch light. It's one of those floodlights that kind of is directional. It's not just a, a light that exists there. And for some reason, one of those lights now points directly across the street at the side of my house. Once that happened, it took me a couple days to realize I have a harder time falling asleep when my room is all lit up and bright, and that's where it was coming from. I mean, it literally lit up my room to where I could almost read a book with how bright it was. It also reminds me, when I used to live out more in the middle of nowhere, where there weren't street lights and things were pretty dark, uh, occasionally I would go with my friends places like the movie theater. And this one time I did get pulled over by the cops because... I left the movie theater and didn't turn on my headlights because, frankly, the street lights in the movie theater parking lot made it so that I couldn't even tell that it wasn't. I couldn't even tell that my headlights weren't on. <laughs> so now that I live in a place where light pollution is potentially having a bigger effect on me, I would like to see exactly what effects that may have and whether or not I should consider getting out of here. <laughs> what do you think? And our final story before we get to the next section. So, are video games good for us or not? An Oxford University study showed that people who play more video games reported greater well-being. They focused on players of Nintendo's Animal Crossing and EA's Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville. This was one of the first studies which used actual playtime data. The head researcher was surprised by how little data gaming companies actually had about their players and also by how little hard data was used in previous studies about harms and benefits of gaming. Oxford University was able to link psychological questionnaires with true records of time spent playing. Previous studies tended to focus on self-reported playing time. The researchers hope that this study will introduce a higher standard of evidence to discussions about the concept of video game addiction and digital harms. I do believe it was very recently that we recognized video game addiction as a legitimate uh, condition, where, whereas people felt physically addicted to video games. I used to play a lot more video games than I do now, and, and frankly, I just don't have time for it. But when I did play video games, I, I will admit that I had a pretty successful account on Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare, the the precursor to this game that they're referencing, uh, Battle for Neighborville. I was pretty good at it, I have to say. <laughs> Granted, uh, the, the target demographic was, you know, I was kind of at the top of it. So as one of the older players, it only made sense. I'll admit that repeatedly winning definitely boosted my mood. <laughs> I would be interested to see more studies... Uh, on video game playing with this kind of hard data, but also an expansion of what types of games they're looking at. I think there's a very specific subset of people that play games like Animal Crossing and Plants vs. Zombies, and that could potentially make a pretty big difference for the results of those studies. If you have people who don't enjoy Animal Crossing playing Animal Crossing, maybe the results aren't as good, or... Maybe you need to look at the other games they're playing. Do people who like certain types of video games get affected differently by the amount of time spent or the games in question? There's a lot of questions about video games. We do know that they can be used to teach important things. They can be used to gamify uh, things like health and wellness and, and help people learn in that sense. Do those type of games have that same effect? 
At this point, we really need to determine what the standard is uh, for determining positive versus negative outcomes of video game playing. And with that, let us get into our next segment. B-R-E-A-C-H. Breach Patrol. It's a breach! All of the latest cybersecurity breaches. A short one for you today. Welcome to Breach Patrol, where we go over the latest in healthcare and cybersecurity breaches. Your story today, Black Friday attacks may lead to dark web leaks. South Korean retail giant Eland suffered a ransomware attack that resulted in disrupting operations of 23 physical stores, 46% of all of the Eland stores. These affected locations were shut down to protect the others from being affected. Attacks during Black Friday week could result in quick ransom payments without negotiation, since losing business this week would be catastrophic for retailers. Eland hasn't admitted to paying anything, but they mentioned that they informed the police so that they can investigate the origin of the attack. If there's any data to use for extortion, they expect to know within about a week, because it's usually when the first samples are publicly leaked on the dark web. That makes me think that there's an online marketplace that police are kind of perusing. They're seeing, oh, here's some data from a leak. All right. And if so, are they detecting leaks that previously were unknown? Retail operations definitely have to be on the lookout for potential breaches over the Black Friday time because that is really when they make so much of their money. It reminds me of a a few years ago when Target experienced a breach in their, their credit card systems, which resulted in people's cards being potentially exposed. Now is a great time if you're a skilled hacker, and obviously I'm not encouraging this, but it's a great time if you want to get into taking people's data. I, for one, as I mentioned, love going Black Friday shopping, not to necessarily buy anything, but just to people watch. I think for me, I have to set a very specific budget so that I don't go over that, and I will take out cash and use that instead for Black Friday just so that I make sure I stay within my budget. It gives me that physical representation, but it also protects my data uh, in the event of a potential Black Friday breach. Something to consider. Obviously, that's not really an option if you're putting Christmas gifts on credit cards, as I know a lot of people do, in order to secure those deals and then pay it off over the next month. As we go into the Christmas season, I'm sending out my well wishes and hoping that you enjoy your holidays, enjoy time with your family as you are able, and I I do hope that you eat some good food and feel nice and relaxed as we go into 2021. I, I heard a pretty good joke the other day. Instead of saying Happy New Year, uh, we should all scream Jumanji so we can get out of this game. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not how the rules of Jumanji work. Someone has to actually reach the end of the game before they can say Jumanji. So all we can really do is hope for the best, keep practicing uh, the best practices that we can think of, and stay strong. That's it for this week's wrap-up of your weekly healthcare news. I'm Alex Ross, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of The Bandage. This week's episode was written and produced by eTactics. eTactics is a leading revenue cycle solutions organization committed to providing innovative, web-based solutions that improve our clients' cash management and customer relationships. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.